Five proofs of recent creation from outer space? Well, that sounds amazingly compelling. Who is it? Which brilliant science boy is bringing us these absolutely irrefutable proofs of creationism? Only a man of staggering intellect could do it, I'm sure. I wanted to do a video about the top five proofs of a young universe. Oh, f it's just Matt, pal. Never mind, everyone, it's just Matt. It's gonna be frickin' stupid and or a lie. God damn it, got my hopes up there that finally someone went out into the vast reaches of space to find something that might even vaguely support biblical creation. Because it certainly isn't in the brains of men, in the Bible, or anywhere else to be found on Earth. So if it was gonna be somewhere, it's gotta be space, isn't it? And just demonstrate that the universe is not 13.7 billion years old, like people have said. People don't really say it in so much as the overwhelming preponderance of evidence points at that conclusion. And not in a fuzzy, uh, I think it might be over there kind of way, but more a great big neon arrow pointing at the conclusion, and the conclusion is on a plinth under a spotlight kind of way. Basically, it's a fucking fact, mate but that it's actually young and was created recently. As always, even if somehow you could prove that the universe was new and created by someone, there's absolutely no way you could prove it was your god, because you're not supposed to be able to do that. In fact, you're not even supposed to try if I recall correctly. Otherwise, what exactly is the point of faith? Of course, we know why you try to prove that, because science has so thoroughly explained basically every single thing that used to be the domain of God and gods, that unless you really, really try to mash him into the tiny cracks left, there's not much room for the poor guy. Someone just give him his watch and let the poor redundant f***er retire. And let's move on with our lives, shall we? And the first reason that we know this is because of short period comets. Comets are going to prove that the universe is new. Well, that's at least a new one on me, so fun. I genuinely love it when I hear something that I haven't heard before. Of course, then it's always immediately and obviously debunked by cursory questioning slash five seconds of research, but at least I have to do something to refute it, so yay. Now, if you're not sure what those are, they are balls of ice that are floating about in space right now. Oh man, I love that implication. I mean, seriously, who the crambles hasn't heard of pigging comets? Aside from maybe toddlers and, of course, total dipshits. So your audience has to be one of those. And as much as you do look and sound kind of like a kid's TV show host, I don't think any responsible parent should let their kids listen to your hateful, stupid ass. And they deteriorate in less than 10,000 years. Less than 10,000 years? And how do you know that? I mean, how could you know that? If the universe is only 6,000 years old, surely, if anything, any of the old ones deteriorating now would be absolute proof that the Uniboy is older than you think it is. Wump wump. Matt Powell doing a failure straight away. Hands up everybody who's shocked. And so short period comets are all over our galaxy, all over the solar system, and they're going about in an orbit and they're deteriorating over time. Yes, they are. And okay, let's say that none of them are older than your supposed age of the universe. For argument's sake, at least the ones we can find, still not sure how that would prove the universe is young. But I'm sure you're about to tell us the big smart brain reason why. Everyone else, I think you should sit down just in case you have some sort of stupidity induced aneurysm. Best to be on the safe side. And if our solar system was 4.5 billion years old, those things would not even exist. They would have completely deteriorated by now. Oh, you f***ing moron. Are you seriously saying that you think that there were just some comets made at the start of the universe and that's it? I knew you were an idiot, my dude, but that just takes the jizzy biscuit. Does it not occur to you that comets might come from somewhere? Not that there are just zillions of them zooming around in space. Comets, at least the ones we tend to see, happen when something knocks some of the debris from the edge of the solar system into empty space. And generally, they're caught in the sun's gravitational well. Christ almighty, dude. First one and you already haven't bothered to ask an incredibly simple question about the universe. It's like you actually don't want to know. The second proof is simply the planet Pluto. 
Oh, no, what have you done, Matt? You've started a bunch of people saying, yeah, it is totes a planet. And then, you know, everyone else going, no, it's not a planet. It's a dwarf planet. I wish it was a proper one. It's adorable, but we really need our definitions to mean something. You can tell what camp I'm in. Although, I also think that we should declassify Earth as a planet, and more of a giant garbage ball covered in disgusting, skittering parasites. So maybe I'm not the best person to ask about it. Pluto is warm on the inside. Now, if Pluto was from 4.5 billion years ago, when it finally was created back then... I have no idea what you mean by warm on the inside. Every single source I could find for the temperature of Pluto is in the multitudes of negative Celsius, and the closest thing to warm anyone describes about it is it might be warm enough to have liquid ocean under the surface of it, which wouldn't need to be warm per se regardless. It's almost like you are taking one word and then stretching it out to fit a narrative completely counter to what every scientist is saying. But you wouldn't do that, would you, Matt? Yeah, I know he would. I'm being sarcastic. But I wouldn't do that, would I? It would be freezing cold on the inside. There's no way that something could just stay that warm for that long, for the course of 4.5 billion years. Um, but what? No way that something could do that. But loads of planets do that. All the time. Earth f***ing does that. The goddamn sun does that. And apart from the fact that, again, no one is saying that Pluto is warm in the way you want people to think they are, what exactly makes you think that something couldn't be warm for that long anyway? Is it because the feelings your parents had for you cooled off rather quick when they found out you were a lying, science-denying crackpot? Because I can see that. If you came to my house and saw a hot cup of coffee on the table, you would never assume that that cup of coffee was 4.5 billion years old. Oh, of course, a cup of coffee and a f***ing planet, or at least a dwarf planet, share the exact same properties. Also, your little steamy coffee there would be infinitely hotter than any of the guesses at the temperature anywhere on Pluto. Which, by the way, no one is claiming to know for a fact. It's something that is being studied. And again, they aren't even close to the same thing. Pluto is many orders of magnitude larger than any coffee ever made. The only drink that could compare is the one I'm going to have to pour for myself after having to deal with your stupid ass again. And let's not kid ourselves, it'll be way f***ing bigger than Pluto. I'm sorry, it would have cooled off over the course of just 10 minutes. But people have no problem believing that things happen to stay warm for 4.5 billion years. Christ, you really are full of shit, aren't you, dude? There's no way you think that's a good argument. Even you, Matt, brain the size of a desiccated raisin Powell, must know that's just completely stupid, right? It takes a lot of faith. To believe that you're not that stupid? Yeah, I guess it does, because it's not like we have any evidence that you're not completely profoundly idiotic and an overwhelming amount of evidence that suggests that instead of a brain, you in fact have a mouldy cup of soup sloshing around in that vacuous bunce of yours. The third reason is the planet Saturn. Oh Christ, here we go. What do you think this is going to be? Maybe that the rings could only have happened if God put them there because he wanted us to have a random planet that's wearing its prettiest dress? Or maybe it's simply because Saturn makes Matt mad, so now he's going to denigrate it to his audience. What did Saturn do to hurt you, Matt? Hopefully, something funny. I mean, Saturn's rings are unstable. What did I tell you? He's saying that there's something wrong with Saturn's rings. Look, Saturn's rings are trying their best, Matt. Saturn's rings deserve a bit of slack, and Saturn rings do not have to conform to your primitive notions of stability to be good rings doing what they can, you prick. Saturn's rings are actually dispersing right now as we speak, and before long, those rings will be completely gone. Now, yeah, in about 300 million f***ing years, I don't know what you mean by before long, but since you think that the universe is so new, by your standards, 300 million years is literally 50,000 times as long as the universe has been around. So you know, the fuck. If Saturn, the planet, and the rings around it were 4.5 billion years old, those rings would have completely dispersed and deteriorated by now. Oh my god, why do you keep doing this? What makes you think that Saturn formed with rings? You know that things in the universe didn't just pop into existence, right? Oh, right, that's exactly what you believe. Yeah, no, the universe, as we know it, formed, according to the science, but that doesn't mean it hasn't changed. Things in the universe change. Planets move. 
particles come together to form new objects. Suns explode and planets without rings can have objects break down in their orbit and form stable rings of debris around them. So no, you're wrong, and it's perfectly reasonable for Saturn to currently have rings, you great galoof. But they're still there, which means that they were created recently, not billions of years ago. They were formed relatively recently, but still like 10 to 100 million years ago. And I hate to tell you, but that's slightly longer ago than your dumbass ideology thinks the universe has been around for. It's like you are trying to debunk yourself, I fucking swear. The fourth reason is simply stars. STARS! That's it folks, now shut up and f off. Matt's got nothing else to say on that point, it's all just stars. Because he is such a big smart boy who don't need none of that explaining his point or elaboration. That's what stupids do. Now, a star will die 1 per 25 years per galaxy. Oh no Matt, you're doing what the stupids do. No. And oh god, I just realised where he's going with this. It's probably basically gonna be the same argument as two of the last three, which has exactly the same f***ing problem. That being, Matt doesn't understand that the universe isn't static because he thinks that the universe has to conform to the idiotic nonsense of his ancient book. And so, if the galaxy was less than 10,000 years old, we would predict to only find about 200 dead stars in our galaxy. Okay, not the direction I thought he was going to go in, and um, what the hell are you talking about? Where did you get that number? Because I can't find it anywhere, and how are you even defining dead star? If you mean neutron star, the thing that happens to massive stars after they go supernova, there are like 3,200 known neutron stars in the Milky Way. So far too many, and if you mean a black dwarf, aka what happens to a smaller star once they've run out of energy, well, none currently exist, because, and you're going to love this, the universe is too young. They're still billions of years in age, but there still certainly wouldn't be any at this point. And even more hilarious is that even the shortest lived stars live for millions of years. So your, we would expect to see 200 dead stars in 10,000 years, is so completely ludicrous, I can only assume that you fucking made it up. And sure enough, that's what we find. We find less than 200 dead stars in the galaxy would love to know how you are defining that. Because as far as I can tell, absolutely goddamn not. And I also really, really, really want to know why you think you would expect to find that amount in only 10,000 years. Because again, that doesn't make any chuffing sense. You know, it's like you pretend to understand the science until it becomes inconvenient or something like that. Really makes you think. No, wait, sorry, I mean drink. If you look at other galaxies, you'll only find about 200 dead stars in each galaxy, which means that if evolution were true, and if the evolutionary timescale of billions of years was taking place... Wait, what? This has nothing to do with evolution, the f***? And again, your 200 dead stars would still have millions of years in it. I mean, depending on those supposed stars, some of them could be nearly as old as the universe as science knows it, because again, smaller stars, which burn much slower, have yet to have had long enough to become black dwarfs. So plenty of time for evolutions to do loads of shit you would have hundreds of thousands of dead stars throughout the entire universe. A number that, again, you are apparently pulling out of your ass. The fact that you find only 200 dead stars per galaxy literally proves beyond any shadow of doubt that the galaxies, and our galaxy in particular, the Milky Way, is a young galaxy. It really, really friggin' doesn't. In fact, even if what you said about the number was true, all it would prove, at best, is that it's millions of years old and completely and utterly refute any form of biblical creationism easily. Now the fifth and most powerful reason. Okay, nice, last one. Thank, Senor Goddington. And hey, it's the most powerful. I mean, I don't know why you would save the best for last, because if it's actually any good, then you've already lost most people at this point to the sheer ineptitude of your previous proofs. That even if this one had some legitimacy, you have already primed people into thinking that you probably have messed something up. But sure, go ahead, let's get this shit show done. Is actually the magnetic field of the Earth and other planets. See, magnetic fields are actually what keep our planets and keep the Earth in particular from being bombarded with space dust. Um, okay, I'm not gonna make any guesses where this is going. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, uh, fiddly dee. But sure, that's kinda right. 
I mean, I wouldn't call cosmic radiation and charged particles from the sun space dust, but fine, sure, close enough. Now, uh, how are you gonna f*** this up? If the magnetic field was too strong, we would die. If it's too weak, uh, we would die. It has to be just right in order to protect us. I'm sorry, if it were too strong, we would what now? You know that humans aren't bloody toasters, right? Electromagnetic fields don't really have all that much effect on them. You could stand right next to a powerful electromagnet and not really notice a thing. So I don't know what your version of too strong means or what it would do, but I'm going to assume no. But even if you were right, you know that evolution thing? Yeah, that means things adapt. So if it were too strong, then the life that formed here could and more likely would have adapted to that strength. That's kind of how it works. From issues from outer space or sunlight, deadly radiation coming through. And so the Earth's magnetic field in particular is very important and it is vital to our survival. Right, it is vital to life on Earth, that's true, and certainly life as it is. But again, 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 that in no way proves that anything was created and definitely doesn't come even close to showing it was even remotely recently. The half-life of the Earth's magnetic field is actually 1400 years. I have never heard the term half-life when referring to an electromagnetic field. Half-life is a term for radiation. I, I don't think that that's the same thing, but uh, I don't know what you're talking about anyway. There has been decay in the strength of the field detected over the past couple of centuries, but I don't think that's the same thing. And so what that means is that every 1400 years, the Earth's magnetic field gets chopped in half. The f Doesn't that mean that in not that long, geologically speaking, that the Earth's EM field is going to be all but gone? Don't you think someone might have noticed? Don't you think people might be talking about how the Earth has not hundreds of millions of years, but a few short millennia before it'll be completely inhospitable for life? Or maybe that's bullshit and you don't know what you're talking about, maybe. And so you can only lose so much before you've lost it all. And if the magnetic field gets too weak, like I said, the sun's rays will penetrate the Earth's atmosphere and kill everything on the Earth. And yet, again, no one's talking about it. Almost like that's not f***ing true. With the half-life being only 1400 years, you take that back, uh, even 10,000 years. If you were to go beyond 10,000 years, the Earth's magnetic field would be so powerful that it would literally kill everything on Earth as well. Uh, no. If your half-life hypothesis were correct, then the Earth's magnetic field would have the magnetic strength of a fridge magnet. Now, that might sound scary to you, but that is only because you think that they're dangerous because your doctor keeps telling you to stop f***ing swallowing them. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope, wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe, and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six channel Spoon Star Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships, and PayPal to support directly. Finally, Follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-